Hello, Pray and Share Warriors. Check my bars here. Let's open the pretty little down some. There we go. I hope you are having an awesome day. It is Friday. Yay, Friday. And then tomorrow, Saturday. Then we got then we start all over again on Sunday. Anyway, I had an awesome day today. I hope you did too. I hope you have an awesome tomorrow. Tonight, we are going to do Psalms 37. And I'm sorry, I did not come last night. And I have some new subscribers. So welcome to my new subscribers on Facebook and on YouTube. Welcome. And um, oh, my hair. Oh, my. That's it's a ponytail day. I hope you can tell. You know, most of the time when you go places, you don't see all the hair sticking up on your head until you get on the camera and then you see all your hair sticking up in the air. Anyway, it's not important. We're going to do Psalm 37 and then I have I studied this a little bit while I was waiting, so I learned how to do this, and I'm quite proud of myself, and I have a cheat sheet in case I forget what I learned, which is that happens too. So we're going to do that, we're going to do Psalm 37, and we're going to do that, and I think Psalm 37 is kind of long. So anyway, we will get it done, we'll do the study part about it, and I was noticing that I have a red spot on my left eye, which is my dominant eye, and I don't know what that's about. Now I got really hot and really, I don't know whether that's been there since Sunday. Oh well. It might have been there for months, and I'm just now noticing it. I wouldn't be surprised. Okay, well let's pray. God knows how long it's been there, and that's really all that matters is that He knows. Is not cooperating with the shirt. Right. God, we just praise you and thank you. And we just pray that um, you would just help us to be, move your heart, God. And we just want to move your heart. And God, we just thank you because you are the great Jehovah. You are the great I am. You are from everlasting to everlasting. You are our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector. You are our shelter in the storm. You are our strength and refuge and our everlasting father. God, we just uh, praise you because you are magnificent and miraculous and powerful, God. You are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness according to your truth, not the truth of the world. And God, you are loving and kind and compassionate and caring faithful and trustworthy and patient. You want none to perish, God. Thank you for loving us as your children. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. God, we pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals to come home, God. We just pray. We just pray for them to return home to you, that they would repent and that they would be reconciled, God. We pray for all the people that are in tragedy, especially these people that are on their 40th day of a volcano eruption, God. We just pray that you would meet their needs, God, that you would send them um, the hands and feet of Jesus and the love and compassion of Jesus to meet their needs they would feel your presence, God, that they would be drawn to you during this time. For all the other disasters that are going on, God, we just pray that you would be with these people also. We pray for all the people that are sick, God. We just pray for healing. We praise you for healing, too, because you have healed many, and you will continue to heal people. We just pray that they would trust you in their in your process of healing, God. 
And we pray for all these people that are facing unemployment next week, God. Many of them hitting their deadline of November 1st. Many of them hitting their deadline of December 22nd. And uh, and uh, anyway, uh, I'm sorry. My husband is talking in the background. That really threw me off. I didn't know what that noise was. Okay, well, you have to excuse my husband because he does not have an inside phone for us. Okay, um, we just pray for all the people that are on the verge of losing their jobs. God, we pray that they would be strong and stand up for their convictions, God. We just pray that you would bless them with a better job. We just find it very sad and very sorry that people that put their lives on the line last year when we didn't even know what this disease was, we didn't even know whether it was survivable, they are the very ones that are losing their jobs this year, God. That's just not right. It's not justice, and it's not right. And I pray for them and their families. I pray that they would have a peace, that you would bless them with a better job, God. Pray, God, for um, just pray, God, for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength. And in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Okay, excuse me. It's just very distracting. Okay, well, I'm going to read this verse that I shared today. I don't know whether it goes with this psalm or not, but it's just a psalm that popped into my head this morning. I hear it a lot on the radio. I really like it. I'm going to see if I'm still on. Yeah. I ran my cursor across the recording thing. Okay, this song is called uh, Move Your Heart by Maverick City Music in Upper Room. And uh, it's just such an awesome song and message. And a simple message in these lyrics. Like, I just want to move your heart. We just want to move the heart of God. I believe that unabandoned worship and praise moves the heart of God. And when we fall on our knees with our hands up in reverence to who God is, our creator, our sustainer, provider, and protector, plus so much more, and surrender to his control, I believe that moves his heart too. This moves him. We have his attention. He loves us, but he wants the love returned. He wants us to love him too. Um. Not when we need something or when it's convenient, but 24-7, 365 days. In every moment, he wants us to love him. He wants us to love him with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. He wants us to love others also, no matter who they are or what they have done. He wants us to have a repentant heart. He will give us strength to walk away from our sins. God only forgives, not only forgives us for our sins, he forgets it too. He blesses us with new mercies and grace every day. Choices to serve him or the world. We have that choice every day. We can serve him or we can serve the world. I'm choosing to be obedient tonight. It was a struggle. It gets to where it's a struggle sometimes. Not because I don't enjoy this. It's just, it's a spiritual battle thing. Um, lost my place. This song encourages me to try harder to move the heart of God. We are here, here to fulfill His plan and purpose in our lives, not our own. 
in our obedience come overflowing blessings. And that's what I've found in my life, that when I am obedient, I get blessed. When I'm not obedient, I suffer the consequences. I would rather be obedient and get blessed than suffer the consequences. Sometimes they're not very pleasant. God sent Jesus to die for all. I, I put all in caps, all. Everyone is invited into God's kingdom where King Jesus rules forever. Jesus is coming. Are you ready? You know, he could come at any moment, at any second. Jesus could come. We could be gone out of here. But if you're not saved, you won't be going out of here. Because we can't be good enough. We can't be good enough. Um... Be ready. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Come just as you are. Admit that you are a sinner. Ask for forgiveness. Believe that Jesus is God's one and only Son that came to save the world through his death, burial, and resurrection. Confess Jesus as your Savior and Lord of your life. Invite him into your heart. And I mean, that's easy. That's easy. That's the easy button of salvation. That's how easy it is. I know a lot of people think it's difficult and it's hard and I've got to clean my life up and I've got to do this and I've got to do that and I've got to, I've got to go to church and be somebody that I'm not. But that's not true. You start there. You start with forgiveness and believing that Jesus is who God says that he is. And inviting him to be your savior. That's your beginning point. And then from there, God will change your desires. He will clean up the things that he doesn't like in your heart. Is it painful? Yeah, sometimes it is. But you know what? It's so worth it. It is so worth it. Don't know how long Psalm 37 is. Okay. Oh, it's 40 verses. I thought it was kind of long because I was looking at something that was Psalm 37 7. So I thought, well, this is a long one. All right. The heritage of the righteous in the calamity of the wicked. Okay, we see that so clearly right now. Right now, we see where the wicked is. We see what the wicked are doing. We, nobody has to tell us. We know. We know what they're doing. This is going to tell you of the heritage of the righteous in the calamity of the wicked. And this is a psalm of David. And David talks about the wicked a lot. David had encounters with the wicked a lot. David had some times of being wicked too and not doing what God asked him to do. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Well, that is just so powerful already. Because a lot of times we see people that are doing things that aren't, aren't right, aren't lawful or not right. And we think, wow, but they're prospering and they're just doing so great. And they have this and they have that. And wow, they just must be doing so good. But really, they're not happy. There's no happiness or peace in wickedness. There's just not. The only peace that we have is through Jesus. That is a true peace. You might find false peace, but it's not going to last very long. The true peace that passes all un understanding is through Jesus. So commit your way to the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. 
He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, just like I was talking about. Because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it only causes harm. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. The wicked, the wicked, the evil people are going to meet their demise, and it's going to be through God. God is the righteous judge. He is the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness and not according to the world's truths, according to his truths in this book. So it's not going to be your truth or their truth or whatever. It's God's truth. That is all that matters is God's truth. Um, indeed, you will look carefully for, this, for his place, but it shall be no more. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plots against the just. We're seeing that right now. We are seeing wicked plot against the just, against God's children. We are seeing wicked plot against God's children. And gnashes at him with his teeth. They don't like us. I don't care. The Lord laughs at him. God laughs at the wicked. They do all these plans and all these things, and if it's not in his will, it's just not going to come to pass. For he sees that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy. That's exactly what's happening right now. To slay those who are of upright conduct, their sword shall enter their own heart and their bows shall be broken. That is the power of God. Their swords will enter their own hearts. A little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, and the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord. Like the splendor of the meadows shall vanish into smoke, they shall vanish away. The wicked borrows and does not repay, but the righteous shows mercy and gives. For those blessed by him shall inherit the earth, but those cursed by him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. I have been young and now am old. Wow, this is me. I have been young and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. He is ever merciful in lands, and his descendants are blessed. Depart from evil and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loves justice and does not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever. But the descendants of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous speaks wisdom. And his tongue talks of justice. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watches the righteous and seeks to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. It, I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a native green tree. Yet he passed away, and behold, he was no more. Indeed, I sought him, but he could not be found. 
Mark the blameless man and observe the upright. For the future of that man is peace, but the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The future of the wicked shall be cut off. You know, that has been in there. I haven't counted it, but I know it's been in there at least three or four times. The future of the wicked shall be cut off, but the descendants of the wicked shall be cut off. That shall be cut off has been in here several times. But the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble, and the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them, because they trust in him. That is so good. I want to see how many times it says, Evildoers shall be cut off. one time two but those cursed by him shall be cut off and at least four times if not more because there's two times over here so this is the future of the wicked And then the righteous will inherit the earth. The wicked will be cut off. The wicked will be destroyed. In God's timing, when God gets ready to judge this earth, there's not going to be anybody that can hold him back. He is going to judge the earth. He will judge all unrighteousness. So we need to walk in righteousness does that mean we're perfect no we're not just like it said in here they'll fall down but god will lift them up you know we will fall down we will make mistakes but we will not we don't need to live wicked or evil we don't even need to take evil into our minds or into our hearts we don't need to see evil we don't need to hear evil and we don't need evil in our hearts so guard guard your eyes what you see and guard your ears what you hear because you can't unsee anything that you have seen if you see some kind of gory scary movie our enemy is going to use that movie against you when you least expect it. When you're alone one night and it's dark and it's rainy and it's scary, all those images are, he's going to bring all those images back. So just don't even put them in there. Don't put them in there. Don't feed, don't feed the evil spirit. Okay, well, let's see what the study part of this says. Okay. The collection of wisdom teachings promotes the traditional Old Testament viewpoint. The righteous will prosper and the wicked will suffer. That's from Deuteronomy 28. The wisdom teacher instructed his hearers to trust in the Lord, to delight in him, to commit their way to him, to rest in him, and to wait patiently for the Lord. The other side of his admonition is the command not to be agitated by evildoers, since their success is temporary. Eventually, the meek or humble will inherit the earth. This inheritance comes as the gift of God, to whom the meek have committed themselves and before whom they humbly cement themselves. The righteous fail and fall down yet they never experience total defeat. From personal observation, the poet drew the conclusion that God never abandons his children. Though they may experience the heartaches of a fallen world, God's children are never completely forsaken. In fact, his blessings will extend to the next generation. That's powerful. 
will extend to the next generation. And the generation after that, you know, we are supposed to teach our children about God. I read that yesterday in my daily verse that we are we are to be teaching our children about God. Okay, so this is the salvation message tonight. And I'm going to read it. Whatever your struggle, loneliness, guilt, suicide, sex, stress, life after death, purpose in life, AIDS, abortion, drugs, there is an answer. There is an answer. God loves you and has a great plan for your life. Like I was talking about, you know, God has a plan and a purpose for each one of our lives. He created you for a purpose, to have a personal relationship with him. He wants you to experience a full and abundant life right here on earth. Jesus said, my purpose is to give life in all its fullness. John 10.10 10. Okay. All right. We're to hear. Sorry. We're to hear. God loves you. Because of sin in your life, you are separated from God. Okay, I read that. I read that backwards. We are all sinners, Romans 3.23. The price for sin is death, Romans 6.23. Eternal separation from God. Your sins have cut you off from God. Sin. So here's an image of God over here. And sin separates God from man. Sin separates man from God, but there is hope. Sorry, I'm looking at my diagram. Okay, there we are. See in the center, Jesus on the cross. The price has already been paid. The price is already paid. God showed the great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Romans 5, 8. And then 5. 5 is, it's free. It's free for us. It wasn't free for Jesus, but it was free for us. It's a free gift for us. Eternal salvation is a free gift. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. You can't be saved by, we talked about this earlier, good works, Bible knowledge, morality, or religion. None of those four things save us. You can't earn your way into heaven. You cannot be good enough. To get into heaven, there is only one way, and that is through Jesus. Jesus is the answer. See, Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer, the only answer. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, John 14, 6. You know, I heard somebody the other day talking about this this verse and talking about people thinking that there are other ways to get to heaven and that if that was true then Jesus would have said I am a way but he didn't say I am a way he said I am the way he is the only way he is the way the truth and the life not a He's not a way, a truth, and a life. No, he is the. He is the only way. So seven is, it's up to you. You must decide for yourself if you are willing to turn from your sins and ask Jesus into your heart. Romans 10, 9, John 1, 12. And so there is a really, really short prayer I don't think there's anything else. Oh, yeah, there is. 
or eight points. Okay, so if you would like to accept Jesus as your Savior, I promise you this is the very most important decision that you will make in your lifetime. Because it is the decision that determines where you will spend eternity. There are only two places. There's heaven and there's hell. And Jesus is the only way to get to heaven. So I'm going to say this prayer. And if you would like to receive Jesus as your Savior, then repeat after me. Jesus, I ask you into my heart to be my Savior and Lord. Forgive my sins and give me the gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, if you said this prayer, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Once you ask Jesus into your life, you, you can know that you have eternal life. 1 John 5, 11, 12, and John 10, 28, 29. It is important that you be baptized and get involved in a local church. Get help from an older believer. Spend daily time in prayer and Bible reading. Share with others what Jesus has done for you. Now, this is not works. This is so you can grow spiritually. It's not that um, if you don't do these things, then you're not going to go to heaven because you accepted Jesus as your Savior. But in addition to that, you want to grow spiritually. You want to learn more about Jesus. So I would start in Matthew. Matthew is going to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Gospels, are going to show you so much about Jesus. So I would start in the Gospels, and I would just read a chapter a day. It really doesn't take that long. I read a chapter every day. Um, I read uh, version. I have version on my phone, and I read whatever the scripture is that day. I read that chapter. I don't just read the scripture. I read the whole chapter. And some of them are longer than others, and some of them aren't, but it is a learning of God's word, which is our truth. This is, this is God's truth. All right. Well, if you accepted Jesus, then the angels are rejoicing in heaven, and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I can't get my necklace to do right tonight. Um... You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus, his son. So congratulations. All right. Well, it is time to do my, not mine, to do God's blessing to you. And to pray and get out of here. So if you, if there's a favorite scripture that you like, then please put it in the comments. I would love to read any comments that y'all have, any feedback. I would love to do this live um, and be able to comment back and forth. Of course, I used my phone, so I don't know how I would do that. I don't know how that would work. Anyway, I used to do it live on my computer. I did my Facebook live on my computer and did uh, the other on my phone. And then my phone got full of stuff and I couldn't do it, so I swapped. Mike can swap back, because I'd really like to be interacting. I watch a lot of YouTube videos with uh, chats, and I sit there and I, I talk the whole time. Okay, so in number six, 24 through 26, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you 
and give you peace. All right. Well, it's time to pray again. God, we just come to you and we just thank you, God, for all the many blessings that you have given to us, all the many things, God, that you do for us. And we just I pray for anyone that comes to watch this. I pray that their families, them and their families would be blessed, that you would protect them, that you would provide for them that you would guide and direct them, God. And if they don't know Jesus as their Savior, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. If there's anyone that comes here that is a prodigal God, I pray that you would draw them back to you, that they would repent and be reconciled, God. I pray, God, that you would give us the boldness to go out and share your truths and to share the gospel of Jesus that we would be the loving compassion of Jesus, that we would be the hands and feet of Jesus, that we would be the light of Jesus that people see. And God, we just, uh, we pray for truth. We pray for truth to rise above all the lies that we hear every day, God. We pray for truth. We pray for your truth. We pray that you would give us the boldness to stand for your truth. We pray that you would continue to give people that are faced with this vaccine mandate, this unconstitutional vaccine mandate, that you would give them strength, God, that you would give them perseverance, that you would bless them for their decisions, God. God, we know that we get our freedom from you and that our government does not grant us our freedom that you give us free will to choose every day whether we want to follow your ways or whether we want to follow the ways of the world. And we just pray that you would give us strength to continue to follow after Jesus and to enjoy the blessings of being obedient to you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, my pray and share warriors, it is time to get off of here. Um. I would say that I have to feed Seth, but I tried to feed him while ago and he didn't want to eat. I dumped a ton of uh, cinnamon on his oatmeal. I don't know. He just goes through phases. I guess I'll have to make him something else. All right. Well, y'all have an awesome rest of your night and have an awesome tomorrow and much love. And cyber hugs. God bless you all and your families abundantly. And I'll see you again. Good night. <laughs>